Okay, thanks, Sarah. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to celebrate our women entrepreneurs um, and to hear about uh, our announcement of um, our grant recipient for the 2020 to 2021 fiscal year. Um, the first time we have a chance to hear about all, uh, all five finalist businesses. Um, and uh, it, it is my pleasure to um, introduce Kitty Johnson uh, from CAP Services. Uh, for this entire program, uh, Midday and CAP Services are partners, um, not just in uh, judging our, our applications, um, but also in um, providing the business coaching and services for the grant recipient. So I'll turn it over to Kitty, who will say more about our program and our process, um, and then we'll get into hearing from each finalist. So Kitty. Thanks, Irene. Hoping my feed works out well and that you guys can all hear me for the duration of this. Um, and I know I'm, I'm limited, so I will keep this within my timeline. I'll try. So good afternoon. I'm, I'm really glad that we have so many wonderful women entrepreneurs at this event today. It's great that we can do this virtually, even if we can't be face to face. Um, as Irene said, I'm Kitty Johnson. I worked with um, CAP Services as a business development specialist and business lender serving Outagamie, Calumet, and Wapaka counties for the past 12 years. Um, CAP Services is a community action agency comprising of four departments of human development, business development, child and family development, and housing, offering more than two dozen programs to meet our mission of transforming people and communities to advance social and economic justice. Our vision is that individuals and families have the capacity to achieve their goals and thrive in resilient, equitable communities. CAP Services prides itself on being an equal opportunity and all-inclusive organization with a diverse staff of more than 200 employees. We're located across several counties throughout central and east central Wisconsin. And each of CAP's programs has staff who are well-trained, highly knowledgeable about the details of their specific program and can assist participants in most efficient manner. Um, while CAPS programs are all separate, they are still interconnected, uh, which allows us to do our very best in providing assistance. As Irene mentioned, over the past three years, um, CAP Services has been honored to have the opportunity of partnering with Midday Women's Alliance and offering the Fox Cities Women's Entrepreneurship Grant Program. This business grant program was developed specifically to help support women entrepreneurs and small business owners in the Appleton area. Past grant recipients, <laughs> I apologize, um, Amanda Santoro, owner of the Little Food Company in Kakana, and Tracy Powell, owner of the Lemon Branch in Greenville, have received free mentoring from Midday Women's Alliance in collaboration with CAP Services, and have continued to work with both of our organizations as their businesses have grown and evolved. Expectedly, these resources are even more needed to help small businesses sustain through these difficult times they have been facing over the past five to six months. And unfortunately, we don't see this ending anytime soon. I'm so happy that we have had the privilege of be, um, bringing the grant program to the Fox Valley area for the third year. I think it has been a great success and I'm looking forward to the next um, year of mentoring our recipient. Round one judging took place virtually, of course, <laughs> in mid-July, uh, where the committee narrowed down the applicants to five finalists. And let me tell you, it was not an easy task. We had received many qualified applications from throughout the Fox Valley area. Very impressive women-owned businesses in the Fox Valley. And kudos to all of you. We've seen women-owned businesses grow in this area, and it's just fascinating. We want to continue to see that. Um, for round two judging, it was held virtually again about a week later. And round two judging, um, we were very fortunate to have community and organizational partners take on the task. Again, I don't think it was an easy one <laughs> since we have five amazing finalists. And we do encourage all applicants who are not chosen in this year's, as this year's grant recipient 
to reapply in the next year's program, um, you may just find yourself as next year's recipient. So I get the great pleasure of announcing the five finalists for our third annual Fox City Women's Entrepreneurship Grant Program. And just remember that with the added People's Choice Award this year, each finalist will describe their business and all the members will have the opportunity to choose their top two um, businesses. So pick your top two choices. At the end, the member's choice will be announced. So our five finalists this year were Gray Hat Creations LLC, Candy Teachman, Miss Moody Money, Katie Moody, Nutritional Healing LLC, Kimberly Steger, Tashi Delay LLC, Ali Starfett, and Z54 LLC, Pamela Barnes. <laughs> so yes, all five, yay. And actually, even all the applications, I mean, it, 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 they were wonderful. So now, um, to announce our third annual Fox City Women's Entrepreneur Grantship Program. Oh my goodness, that's a mouthful. The recipient um, is last year's recipient, Tracy Powell from the Lemon Branch. Take it away, Tracy. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, I'm sorry. interrupt here. So we're gonna have each finalist take about four or five minutes to oh. describe their business. Okay. Um, this is something new this year because in the past we haven't had a chance to hear from anyone except the grant recipient. Um, and as Kitty said, we'd like all the members to, in their mind, you know, choose who their favorite and their second favorite businesses are because, um, you know, we no, we don't know who the grant recipient will be so the grant recipient will not be in the poll for members choice so in case your favorite is the recipient make sure you back up we will open the poll up after our grant recipient is announced um just so you know okay um, sorry irene i was anxious <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like everyone else. You want to know who know. <laughs> uh, who uh, who is getting the grant? I guess. Right. Sorry. Um, so sorry, everyone. We're going to slow it down. <laughs> so one alphabetical order, and have Candy Teachman start off with talking about Gray Hat Creations. Are you set, Candy? And Candy, I will do a countdown for you and let you know when you get to. Um, and a half minutes, okay? Okay. Thank you, Irene. Uh, as she said, my name is Candy Teachman, and I am the owner and artist at Gray Hat Creations. Gray Hat Creations is a jewelry studio that customizes jewelry pieces. And what that means is from concept to construction, I work directly with my clients in through video, through images, through conferences, through sketches, and even through computer imaging in order to come up with a piece that is exactly what they're looking for. And most of the people who come to me are actually looking for a gift. And it's, it's really rewarding to, to sit down and talk to my clients and we go through who the recipient is, what it is that we're trying to convey. Is it, is it an event? Is it a, a personalized message just directly from you to them? Or are you celebrating something that's even bigger? And we work from there directly between me and them going through options and changes and choices in order to make sure that it's perfect. Aside from doing the creative uh, custom side, we also have a website that has pre-selected items that are available for, for purchasing. And the way that those work is they're actually based on classic designs that are not trendy. I, I don't want someone to purchase something from me that is going to be out of style in a year or two and sit in a jewelry box or get donated. The whole point of coming to Gray Hat Creations is to purchase something that's going to be used practically every day and just be that favorite go-to piece, your lucky charm, or the, that piece that says, Grandma gave this to me and I, I really love it. I have to wear it every day. So thank you. That's what we are. All right. Yes, yes. Thank you, Candy. That sounds very interesting. Uh, um, Sorry, 
Sorry, we'll not take questions, but we'll go on to our next finalist. Um, alphabetically, that will be Kate B with Ms. Moody Money. Okay, thanks, Irene. Um, it's an honor to have made it to the top five. Uh, my name is Kate Moody. I run Ms. Moody Money. It's a personal financial coaching and education service. Uh, so I help smart women actually follow a budget so that they can enjoy their life and reduce financial stress. See, a quarter of households who make more than $125,000 a year are still living paycheck to paycheck, which seems crazy. And the reason for this, I believe, is because the Venn diagram of intelligence and financial savvy is just two circles floating in space. Like, just because you're a smart person doesn't mean you have any idea how to handle your money. Um, to illustrate this, I would like to show you a couple of artifacts from my own life. Um, up on my wall there, you can see I've got a Phi Beta Kappa certificate that's the nation's most prestigious honor society. Like, uh, I think 1% of college students get into it. And I uh, earned that at the end of my college career. Now, I knew nothing about money. And a few months after earning that certificate, I read the first book that finally explained money to me in a way that made sense, that clicked, that met me where I was at. And let me show you here. It's called Growing Money, A Complete Investing Guide for Kids. <laughs> right? So that's why a quarter of households who are making more than $125,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck, or at least that's one of the main reasons. They don't know where their money is going. They don't have a plan. They don't know how money works. Money is more complicated than it should be, and it doesn't have to be that way. So I created a passive system of money management that allows people to keep their spending within preset limits. It gives them permission to enjoy their life. It tracks your spending for you. Like there's no spreadsheets, there's no apps, there's no writing down all of your purchases. It's super duper simple and it's passive. Um, while automatically saving for things like goals. So if you wanna travel, um, emergencies, retirement, that kind of thing. Now, COVID has made me, like everyone else, pivot in my business. So I'm going totally online, which has been quite the learning experience. Um, the people I'd love to help the most, of course, can't actually afford to buy my services. So I've structured it so that I can give away pretty much everything for free. Like a driven person can make huge inroads on improving their financial situation for free. But where the business comes in, like what people pay for, is actually implementing it. Um, I, I have like a free debt payoff calculator. I do a lot of webinars for free. I've got a lot of like Facebook videos and stuff for free. But then the items that I charge for are things like a, a debt killer calculator and the soon to be ebook, which is now 18,000 words long. And those are smaller purchases then there's gonna be bigger things, uh, like I'm developing a variety of paid online courses, uh, which can range between about $99 and $399. And then there's one-on-one -on -one coaching for the people who really want um, a lot of help and they want that individualized help. So I think this business could not only be successful, but more importantly than that, it, it can help people across the nation have less stress, more savings, and more fun. So thank you very much, you guys. Um, I look forward to hearing about the other businesses that got into the top five. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kate. We're all applauding you. Um, next is Kimberly Steger with Nutritional Healing. Hi, everyone. So I'm Kim. 
I am the owner of Nutritional Healing, which I started by myself back in 2010. So we're celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. And I'm, I'm so thrilled because I never knew starting off as yourself, you know, and something you're so passionate about would grow to what it has today. Um, I am a clinical nutritionist. So first I have my um, undergraduate in business management. And I have my master's of science in human nutrition and disease management. Uh, I had experience working in the fad diet industry for a short amount of time for a reason. I saw what was going on. Um, the fad diet industry is successful because it doesn't work and it's draining people's wallets. It's making people sick, especially women. And it infuriated me. And I thought, it, you know, someone should go do this but on a healthy level and with some education behind it. So that's what I set out to do years ago, why I went for the degree I did. And I opened Nutritional Healing. And my motto is changing people's lives from the inside out. Because a lot of times we want to look and feel a certain way, but we have to go inward and find out what's going on inside. And um, really, I wanted to help bridge the gap between us and healthcare. Because when we are diagnosed with something and we're put on a medication or we're just not feeling well, you're very individualized. You're very specific to what you need to do, which is different from the next person and the next person. And that's what my mission is to educate people on. So um, again, like I said, I never knew it would grow to what it has been today or that I would have a coworker, let alone employees. And I have seven full-time, uh, very strong female employees with me right now. And they are, they are amazing. And what we do, we work one-on-one -on -one with hospitals now. We work with other healthcare providers in the community. And uh, typically our programs are three months, six months to a year long. Uh, people come to see us ongoing, they come back because we are one of their healthcare providers now. And uh, we'll, we'll do things with personalized blood work because that's where we really get some answers finally for people. We look at our metabolic blood work, thyroid, hormones, extensive hormones for people who are struggling with infertility, um, things with menopause. We look at food sensitivity testing, we look at vitamin and mineral levels, um, and gut health uh, mapping. So first we look at that and then we devise a personalized program for people that looks at menu planning, nutrition advice, um, stress management, because we all know that it's not always food that's the issue, what we struggle with in our lives that lead us to eating the wrong thing or not eating enough or eating too much and the list goes on and on and on. Our common uh, clientele that we work with is a lot of women, but we do have men. We do have a lot of children. It's changed over the years. And what we look at is not only weight, because that's not what the big issue is all the time. It's different diagnoses like heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, um, autoimmune disorders, gut health dysfunction, infertility, neurological disorders. And that is what we are helping people with. Prevent medication, get off of medication, um, and especially right now, I can't stress enough with what's going on with COVID-19 uh, in this pandemic, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. And we need to remedy these health conditions on a good day, but especially on a bad day. Because if we get this, if we know someone that gets this, you have to be able to bounce back and have resilience. And if you are already diagnosed and struggling with those, you're already having a weakened immune system. So COVID-19 has been both a blessing and a curse, you know, a curse because people can't go out as much and they don't want to go out as much, but a blessing because with what I do for a living, people need us. People need us now more than ever. Um, so just to finish up a little bit, uh, a few other places, you know, we're very active in the community, myself and the rest of my team. We do uh, educational classes. We do cooking classes with our personalized chef. Uh, she's amazing. If you just want to learn how to do something different, Currently, uh, we do uh, corporate wellness programs at companies throughout Wisconsin, and we're also um, active with WBAY, TV2, WLUK, Living with Amy, just to get education out there, um, especially with women's health. So it is nice to be in this company today is supporting women, um, using women vendors, talking about women's health, and um, I'm very honored to have been one of the finalists. So thank you. All right, thank you, Kim. Um, so already hearing from just three of the finalists, I think you're getting a feel how difficult the decision was for the judges. Um, but I want to remind you all that you have a chance to vote for one of finalists to be our choice recipient. 
um, that's something new this year. Um, and again, you might want to choose your favorite and a backup in case your favorite is our grant recipient. So thank you, Kimberly. Um, so next will be Ali Star at Tashi Lay. Ali, are you ready? I am Irene. Hello, everyone. I see so many familiar faces, and I'm I'm truly honored to be here. I'm Ali Star, and I get to work for a company called Tashi Delay. Tashi Delay team is a Tibet greeting. That means I see you and I honor the greatness within you. And uh, why Tashi Delay? That's how the Tibetan people actually greet one another. So when they see each other, um, they're, they say Tashi Delay and they take the time to look in each other's eyes versus just kind of a drive by like, hey, or just not even acknowledge another soul. So that's igniting to me. Uh, just in and of itself. But really why Tashi Delay exists is to ignite 7.7 .7 billion heartbeats to connect deeper with themselves so that they can honor, truly be Tashi Delay and honor the greatness within others. Um, throughout my experiences, uh, I've worked for the NBA, the NCAA, uh, NBC 26. I've been a personal trainer. So Kim, I'm loving what you're throwing down um, as far as health and, and well-being in its totality. Um, and I've been an elementary school principal, but throughout all of my experiences, guys, I recognize we as humans are so much more alike than we are different. We desire like this deep intimacy to know ourselves, to love ourselves, to know other people, love other people, except our humanness gets in our way. And typically that humanness for me, and I've read, I've noticed with others, is our mindsets. And so my kids always say, my mommy works on strengthening your mind. You know, like other people work on strengthening muscles. My mommy gets to strengthen people's minds, you know? And so it's such a cute way to say it, but really that's what my passion is, team, is to help people with their mental models. Ugh, the stories that are not serving them, the stories they tell themselves about themselves or the stories they tell themselves about other people, coworkers, their significant others, partners, children, neighbors, you name it. Um, they, I call it the saboteurs, right? In our minds, the judges, the imposter syndromes, et cetera. And so I help um, myself and others, we grow together. We always do it together because I do not have it figured out. I get to facilitate geniuses in the room. I grow just as much. And what we do is we, we uh, do exercises to help strengthen our minds so that we can withstand COVID. We can withstand other crises, traumatic things that impact us because life does not care our, about our title, what kind of house we live in, what kind of paycheck we have. Life hits us all. And we're experiencing that now more than ever. And so uh, strengthening young people's minds, but strengthening women's minds is a huge passion of mine. So um, let me get back on track here, team. I do that through a couple areas. Main foundation is emotional intelligence. And what that is, is we work on our self-awareness and our self-regulation. Okay, those are the top two things is like being more mindful and aware of how I'm showing up when I'm my best. And also, how am I showing up when I'm not my best? And what's the gap? And how do we close in and tweak and refine? Because ladies, I'm going to tell you, we are 90% there. We are 90% there. It's the 10% that we just want to kind of tweak, refine, massage, you know, get a little bit better at getting better at. But sometimes our judge will come in and be like, you're not even 90% there. You got a long way to go. Oh my gosh, you're not enough. You don't deserve that promotion. Your marriage is failing. You're, you're, you know, you're not being the best mom. And so when we can flip that talk track, when we can flip that script, my goodness, so much possibility opens up for us. And Kate, you're right. Then we're asking for business. We're asking for the promotion. We're feeling confident. Um, all those things. So uh, emotional intelligence is the, the, the avenue team. And then how I do it typically is I'm passionate about doing keynotes virtually now um, before it was, you know, in a group of wonderful human heartbeats. Can't do that right now, but hopefully someday again. But right now it's a lot of virtual and group dynamic work so that groups can work and function better together as a team and build deeper trust. 
Um, why I'm so passionate about midday and just being so honored as a finalist is because um, this networking is everything to me. Uh, Tashi Delay does a lot of work in, uh, with cultures and organizations, but this new thing we're launching is the um, Enlightenment for Women. And it's an enlightenment group for women. And so there's my timer, Irene, because I knew I'd go over. So, but um, anyhow, and that's why I am so passionate about what Midday and CAP is doing is because it's it's about us and supporting and, and uh, we're launching something new that would be great for this network. And so I would love to be a part of it in whatever capacity. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you. Round of applause for Ellie. Uh, all right. So last, but absolutely not least, just, you know, the alphabet. So last is Z54, Pamela Barnes. Good afternoon, everyone. So good to see some familiar faces and new faces as well. Um, I've been around the organization for quite a few years. Um, and um, but about my business, Z54. Um, I'm going to make it kind of easy because I don't know about your brains, but mine's pretty much woo, foggy and flying around during these times. So I'm going to make it easy with three. Cheers, collaboration, community. So Z54, cheers. Um, you're, you're, I took um, a place in Fox Crossing, which I reside in Fox Crossing for 10 years now. So I took an empty space that had been empty for years and I kind of glammed it up a little bit. It was a, um, a drop off for Goodwill. So you can imagine how beautiful that was. So anyway, I took that space and I created what I hope is a very fun and relaxing place to hang out in. So that's the cheers part of it. I started the business two years ago, um, but what really led me to opening the business is the community and the collaboration. So those are the other two things that really make my heart beat. Um, I worked for Future Nina, which is a um, nonprofit organization for five years. I was their events coordinator. So I did things like um, I planned all their events for their summer concert series, their farmer's market, um, the streetball uh, basketball tournament that used to be in Nina. So what that taught me is first of all, uh, small nonprofits um, that are not associated with a, a big, larger, united way um, struggle to find their voice in, in the community. Um, but what it also taught me is collaboration. So community and collaboration just go together for me very, very well. And so when I saw this opportunity in Fox Crossing to be part of an up and coming community, I got really excited. And so I took all that experience that I had um, with hospitality and, and it's, it, it kind of comes back to when I throw a party, people love my parties and they always say, you should have, you know, you should, you should throw parties all the time. So I said, well, all right, I'll make a business out of that. So every day I throw a party. I open the doors at four o'clock in the afternoon and I welcome you in and have a great friendly staff, um, mainly women, and um, we, we greet you with a cheers. Um, so that's the business itself. Uh, we have a private events room that we've been very privy to host many uh, community or uh, many uh, committee events for midday. Um, and it, it hosts all kinds of different things. So um, we also support local musicians. And tonight, um, and, and many nights this summer, speaking of pivot during this COVID time, we're inviting in food trucks. So um, Osario's food truck is going to roll in again tonight. Uh, we extended our patio this summer, so we have more outdoor space. But um, getting back to the three C's, that's the cheers part of it. So I opened uh, October 19th of 2018, so I'm going on two years. Um, and the collaboration part of it is amazing in that I've been able to collaborate with local businesses. Um, like next door, I have a cycle studio that opened up in January, women-owned, Kenzie Weidman, a superior businesswoman. And she's doing an event coming up in August where she's uh, having a, a, a duathlon and things like that. So again, I collaborate with her and we are the place that um, it ends at. I've also collaborated last summer with many women uh, locally owned boutiques and we did a fashion show. So um, I'm always trying to find ways to collaborate with businesses. I don't see 
um, my fellow businesses as competition. I see them as an opportunity to collaborate. And then finally, the third C is community. Um, again, I took that community approach that I, I learned so well from future Nina and how that just, oh, it just works when you all just come together and you make something really cool. So I'm seeing an opportunity in Fox Crossing to kind of do some destination marketing. And, um, and I'm, I'm working with some of the other local businesses like Community First Credit Union's headquarters, Myron, um, Secura. I'm, I'm trying to kind of form a, um, I don't know if it's going to be a nonprofit or what it's going to be, but it's, it's going to be to promote the community in general. And um, so many of our tax dollars can only go so far. So you need that kind of extra um, boost. And if we as a Fox Crossing businesses can all collaborate and put our money together, um, we can we can do some good destination marketing. So um, I, I'm, I'm out of time. I've got my timer on. So again, um, I would love to see, I've seen many of your faces in um, Z54. Uh, love to see you back again. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, thank you for the finalist. I'm amongst some um, very cool people um, that I admire uh, in the community. And uh, cheers. Thank you. Awesome. Z54. Uh, so a surprise to all you finalists. Um, those of you who are not going to receive the grant, and not going to receive the Member's Choice Award. You will be getting a gift from midday through the mail. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, at this point, I hope all, all the members have, have uh, the finalists in mind that you will vote for. Again, you'll see how difficult the decision was. Luckily, we had a, a rubric that the judges used, but uh, I think Four out of our five judges are with us today, so I would love to recognize them for the, the help that they gave to us um, in alphabetical order again. Um, we have Mike Bendel from Epiphany Law. Um, we have Mia Young from UW Extension. Um, Michelle Model Sorens, who you heard from earlier um, with Wibic. Um, Kara Nelson. I think Karen is here um, with the city of Appleton. And then finally, Jamie Sellen from the Fox Cities Chamber of Commerce. So y'all can see that was a great 10 judges that we had and um, it was a tough decision for them. So uh, what happens now is we'll uh, hear from Trey Powell, who was the last, who was the grant recipient from last year. She'll say a little bit about what her experience was, and then she has the pleasure of announcing who the new grant recipient is. Um, once we announce the new grant recipient, then uh, we will open up the poll for the mesh choice uh, voting. Um, and again, you'll only be able to vote for one finalist, um, so we'll give you some time to think about that. Uh, I will turn this over to Tracy. Tracy, are you on mute? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was a good icebreaker. I'm a nervous speaker, so. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say congrats to all five finalists. I am blown away by all of you. Um, for those who don't become the recipient, please try again next year. I applied the first year and, and was not the recipient, so I applied again the second year and was the recipient, so don't give up. Um, and I look forward to supporting all, every single one of you. Um, I also want to thank ever, to those who were involved last year. Um, Irene, you were just amazing throughout this whole process. Kitty Johnson, you were also a wonderful, wonderful help. Um, Mary Ann, I would not be here in this group, um, applied for the grant without you. Um, my sister-in-law, who came to every mentoring program with me and was my structure. Um, and then everyone at Midday and Cap Services, everyone's been amazing. It's been such a great group of women to learn and grow from. And I'm super beyond appreciative. Um, for those who don't know me, I am Tracy Powell. I own the Lemon Branch Aromatic Artistry. Um, the reason it's aromatic artistry is because I, uh, my mom was an artist growing up. 
I went to art gallery. She was a wonderful painter. I got zero of that talent, um, but I always wanted to be an artist. Um, so the thing that I gravitated towards was actually putting scents together. Um, I was a massage therapist for 21 years, and that's when I got my first experience with essential oils. And I absolutely love blending, putting the blend together and creating wonderful, magical, beautiful scents. Um, so within my company, I make roll-ons, body sprays, massage oils, bath salts. I do custom blending. You can come in and sit with me, have your own blend made. And I do consulting for therapeutic purposes as well. Um, um, so when I applied for this, I have been a massage therapist, like I said, for 21 years. I've been dabbling in aromatherapy for 12 years. Um, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to flip the two. I wanted to become less, um, do less massage and more, build my aromatherapy business up more. So, but I needed a lot of help with the retail end, putting myself out there. I've been so used to just working in a small room, one-on-one -on -one with people, not really having to put myself out there. So there was a lot that I needed to learn and grow and know. So Marianne had kind of pointed me in this direction and I decided to apply for the grant the first two years, got it last year. Um, and it's been just the most wonderful opportunity. Throughout the year, I've gotten to do mentoring sessions once a month with Kitty and Irene. Um, and then Irene um, set me up with another mentor for another um, avenue that I needed help with. So then I got extra mentoring that way, someone who was willing to volunteer. I wanted to take full advantage of um, being a part of Midday since I did get the year membership. So I've attended every meeting. I went to the fusion event. I went to the black and pink ball. Um, and all these things are really helping me learn and grow as a business professional, as a person, get out of a lot of comfort zones that I have. Um, <laughs> so I've been really, really, really grateful for this opportunity. And I think for a business owner and entrepreneur, whether you're right at the beginning or you're farther into your business, your career, I think this is just a wonderful opportunity because we always are learning and growing. Um, and for me, it was just a lot of help throughout the year. Um, I did end up using my grant money to uh, finish off some schooling that I wanted to do to full my full certification as an aromatherapist. Um, so from this opportunity is I'm almost three fourths way through my schooling right now. Um, I put myself out there more. I went from having my products in one shop to now five shops. Um, COVID did put a little bit of a pivot on my career. <laughs> um, so that's, I'm pivoting a little bit, focusing more online and um, kind of getting that side of my business, preparing for that. Um, I did offer um, porch drop-offs during COVID, during the shutdown, and curbside pickup, which actually went over really well. So that was kind of a fun, a fun pivot for me to kind of be delivery, the delivery fairy for my products. Um, um, my future goals are creating my own scents, or my own diffuser line, my own perfume line, um, and a and a kids line. So that's something that we've kind of been working with and talking about in our mentoring sessions and kind of helping me keep on the right track, um, doing steps properly, not going from A to Z too fast, which is something I tend to do. Um, so it's just been really, really um, a great honor to be a part of this whole experience. Um, so with that, I would like to have the wonderful great honor of announcing the next grant recipient. Here and I'm going to pass. A drum roll, a drum roll here. Everybody yeah, we can do it. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass the baton right over to Kate Moody with Miss Moody Money. Congratulations, you deserve it. And I'm so very happy for you. Okay, Kate, um, the, the congratulations to Kate. But Kate, would you like to uh, say a few words while we are looking at the poll to vote for the Member's Choice recipient? Uh, yes, thank you. I just have to put down my beautiful plaque, which, by the way, that spot right there on the wall, that's where that plaque is going. It's, I'm so excited for it. Um, oh, gosh, my computer. <laughs> I swear this thing. Okay. Um, so I'd like to thank Midday and all the volunteers outside of Midday who spent a beautiful summer afternoon on a Zoom call all day interviewing us five finalists. 
I am greatly honored and humbled by this generous award. I was overjoyed on the phone when I realized just how much rocket fuel this would put into my business and how many more people will get their money organized, follow a budget, and the improvement on not just their quality of life, but their family's quality of life. And this really was such a surprise for me. I did not expect to win because I know how many great entrepreneurs there are in the Valley. And I figured that there were going to be a ton of amazing applicants and there were, and somehow, I don't know. Um, I actually only applied on the last day because of the Wayne Gretzky quote, you lose a hundred percent of the shots you don't make. And I was like, okay, I'll throw my hat in. And like, these other businesses that applied are awesome. Z54, if you haven't been to Z54, you got to go. It is so cute. It's like, I, I just, I love the architecture in there. You guys did a great job designing it. You're always happy. You give a good pour. I've seen Allie speak twice. Um, she's always a firecracker with just wonderful insights. It, Candy, your gray hat creations, you're right. You're, the pieces that you make really are timeless. They're elegant and they're simple, like just beautiful. And Kimberly Strager, your work is critical to a healthy society. I am sure that you have hundreds of stories of changing people's diets and transforming their lives. And I want these amazing women to be wildly successful. As much as the money will help with getting software streamlined and, and putting a more professional sheen on all of my client facing materials, what I'm really looking forward to is the business coaching. Now that I've been running my business for a while, it's become clear that just me needs a little bit of help. I'm only one person. And that's what I'm super stoked about. That's what's going to make the biggest difference in my business. I'll be meeting with Kitty at Cap Services and Irene, as well as being a mentor and mentee in Midday's mentorship program. I'm really excited for the mentorship program that Irene and Tracy are building. Just like the other finalists here are all smart and inspiring and great at their jobs, the women in this organization are smart and inspiring and great at their jobs. By collaborating and learning from each other, all our businesses will do better. So I'd like to encourage you guys to be a part of the mentorship program. Tracy, I think they need to contact you. So if you could put your email in there just to learn more. Um, so I can't say enough great things about Midday. When I first joined, I figured I'd go to the meetings once a month, meet some people, that'd be good enough. And I'm something of an introvert. So the meetings were kind of intimidating for me. Uh, I wanna take this opportunity to tell you all, if you join Net Midday for networking, then consider getting on a committee, joining the board. It's just a few, a couple more hours a month, but you actually forge real relationships and that's what great networking is. So as a way of saying thank you and show you more of the business plan that you've decided to support, I'm gonna give any member here my Debt Killer 1.0 spreadsheet. It tells you which debt to attack first to save the most money. So just email me today. Uh, it's hello at Ms. Moody Money. I'll put my email address in the little chatty thing. Um, I welcome any suggestions because this is Debt Killer 1.0. Like this is why I'm in the business coaching. Uh, so if you have suggestions on it, please tell me. I'm not going to put anybody on a mailing list or anything like that. It, you can see it if you go to my website, that's MsMoodyMoney.com. Um, I just I want you to know how much I appreciate this opportunity. So. Thank you again to the people who aren't even in midday, but volunteered their time to act as judges. Thank you to the volunteers of midday who put all this together. And thank you to all the members of midday from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys. Thank you, Kate. Can you um, flip your plaque? To, I don't think everybody saw it. So while she's doing that, I have to give credit to Roberta Adam from 
Cutting Etch, one of our newer members. Um, she didn't donate it, but she, uh, I believe, did not get a profit from the plaque. So, yes, in the future, we will look for it over your left shoulder, Kate. Um, so, I hope I can get this to work. I have to... Uh, and can I jump in? I, I'm going to end the poll, but on my end, it's not showing that anyone voted. Did everyone vote? I voted. Okay. Uh, last call. I'm going to end it and maybe some, some numbers will pop up, but on my end, it's saying zero voted. <laughs> voted. Uh, so are you seeing, okay, Tracy, I'm just saying, how do we vote? Did you guys see the, um, the poll pop up? Did everyone see it? Yep, it popped up. We submitted, I submitted mine. Okay. So it should be on the screen right now. Is everyone seeing it? No, I'm looking in, we're looking at a picture of Kate. Kate, okay, okay. <laughs> Who looks really great and masked up. I love it. Yep. Um, so I don't know if you're seeing the different photos. Yep. So Kate, that, that's my favorite. <laughs> I love it. But, but technical difficulties. We do not have a poll result. No, okay, so I, I have, I can see it on my end. Um, I'll end the poll and see okay. what happens. Okay. Okay. And it's saying uh, zero voted. So I'm going to relaunch. Thank you. Uh, so people are going to have to vote again because it's saying it'll clear the results. So here we go. OK. OK, can everyone see that? Yep. OK, so go ahead and vote again. Did. So Kristen, I just voted. Did you see it? Um, it's saying four people have voted. OK. I voted. Hmm, and Tracy's not seeing it. Um, it's still saying 0% voted out of 0 out of 25 have voted. Hmm. Even though you said you suffer votes? Even though what? You said you saw that four had voted? Well, I, it was normally 29. Now it's saying 0 of 25. So I don't know if four people left the meeting because we're down to 27 participants. Um, okay, so because where we are in the meeting, right. um, can I ask everybody to just go into the chat, send your vote to Kristen. Perfect. We'll do this poll the uh, old fashioned manual way. Yeah. So Kristen, <laughs> and then you'll have to count them, Kristen. Okay. All right, I'm on it. Should we put the um, people's names back up on the screen or something? Uh, yeah, so I had put them in the chat, but I will copy it into, because that was way hundreds of. And do you want those comments to go to everybody or to somebody? The votes should go to Kristen. Yep, and I'm just going to tally them. Okay, so while, you, uh, while you're all voting and while Kristen is tallying, um, we're going to just stay at the edge of our seats to learn who's the first choice uh, recipient. Um, but while that's happening, I will fill some time uh, by moving ahead to the legislative moment. Well, actually, um, yeah, actually, Kate did a great job of talking about mentoring and... Hey, Irene? Yes, Kate? I realized that I forgot to thank CAP Services, and I feel ridiculous. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe I forgot. There was, there's just so many people that I, like, I'm so grateful for. I was like, C CAP Services, thank you. I'm so looking forward to lurking with you, Kitty. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a good time. <laughs> That's okay, Kate. I get it. But yes, I'm looking forward to it as well. It'll be great. Oh, yeah. And again, 
last plug for men the mentoring program. Um, we have published a deadline of this Friday, August 1st, get uh, your interest into Tracy. But of course, the way we work things is we will relax that. So as long as you let us know by the end of the month that you're interested in being a MP or a mentor, um, of course, we'll, we'll accommodate your interests. Um, and while Kristen continues to count and tally your votes, um, let me just uh, spend a, a couple minutes talking a little bit of legislative and I am not going to talk about the political conventions. I want to mention some of you might have seen that yesterday was the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. That was the date 100 years ago when Tennessee voted to ratify women's suffrage, the 19th Amendment. Um, it's actually celebrated Women's Equality Day, which is actually a week from today, August 26th. Um, so you're wondering what's the difference in the delay? I think uh, that might have been the date that it was actually recorded. I will have to look that up. Uh, but so Women Equality Day every year, August 6 is the date that we celebrate the passage of the 19th Amendment. So this year being a centennial, um, I think many of you know Midday is a member of the Centennial Celebration Coalition which is being led by the League of Women Voters, the Women's Fund is part of it, AUW, Midday Men's Alliance, um, and other groups. Oh, uh, Karen, Karen Nelson, help me out. Know, Kappa, Kappa Alpha, 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 the Deltas, Delta. yes, right, Delta Deltas. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, an international public service sorority. <laughs> Thank you. Our Northeast Wisconsin chapter here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and so there will be a virtual celebration next Wednesday. Obviously, you can't do it in person. Um, starting at 4.30 on Facebook Live. But if you go to the website, you'll be able to learn more about what's happening. I know there is a fabulous video that's been assembled. Um, so the website is her voice, her vote, our victory .com. We will make sure that that's on our midday mm -hmm. website so that it's easier to find. Uh, so legislative moment is a little light uh, this month um, just because there's so much going on politically and um, we don't want to dwell on that. So um, the other thing I need to do is make sure that everybody is aware that uh, we are collecting nominations for women, women of distinction. Um, that's due at the end of this month. You don't have to be a member to nominate someone and you don't need to be, or the nominee does not need to be a member of midday. So the idea is to uh, lift up women, especially those who have been very involved with helping the community during COVID-19. Um, we'll also support six nonprofits in doing so with a, a, a pivot of that whole program this year. So um, uh, what I would advise is you go to our website and uh, look for information on women of distinction. Um, and that is courtesy, that is um, information from Susan Sawson and uh, and Carly. Carly's, thank you. Oh, you're here, Susan. Hey, you know what? I'm going to hop on and then I've got to hop off real quick. This is Susan Sounds. I'm heading back to work. Um, and this year, it's just a, it's different than last year because this is going to be women of distinction. And our focus is going to be on women in our community that really made a difference this past year during, uh, the, uh, during COVID. And um, we're looking for women to, um, of, of course, applicants of outstanding women in our community that made a difference and this is also going to be part of our foundation program and these women will be featured in a calendar with um, a nonprofit organization um, that has been vetted and um, that um, this individual support individual support so it is much different than it has been in the past so I really encourage everyone to nominate a woman um, who you know has made a difference, and there are so many 
um, throughout our community. So I look forward to getting those applications. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So now, now we need another drum roll. So please, you know, do your own drum roll at your, at your locations. It looks like the vote was really, really close. So um, echoing what Kate said, I hope all of the finalists continue to be a part of midday. Um, wow. I, th I think the vote was pretty almost evenly split, but uh, we do have a member's choice. We have, um, <laughs> Kristen says we are short votes, but if uh, we're gonna close the voting because we are at 12 58. Um, so, okay, I'm keeping you in suspense. Our member's choice is Z54, Pamela Barnes. So Pamela, congratulations. Oh, thank you guys very, very much. Um, that means a lot to me. It's, it's uh, at, as we all know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a long and challenging way um, to, to run a business um, these days. And um, I appreciate the support very, very much from this organization um, holding their meetings at Z, um, just coming and hang out um, with their friends. And um, I, I look forward to seeing you all when you're, when you're comfortable. Um, we do have a, a large outdoor area if, uh, if that uh, is appealing. But again, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and I look, I look forward to uh, continued involvement with this organization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this has been just an exciting hour, almost four. I'm going to hand it back to Sarah to close our meeting. All right. Uh, thank you, Irene. Um, I just want to thank all of our finalists and all of our guests and members who showed up today. I think this was a really great program, and I hope all of you continue to be a part of Midday in the future. Um, look for our next meeting, especially in October, for Women of Distinction, as Irene mentioned. They're still looking for applicants for that, so um, please check out our website for more information regarding that. Um, unless anybody else has any announcements, I'm going to close this meeting for today. Uh, hope everybody can get outside. It looks like it's gonna be a great day outside and look forward to seeing all of you next month. Oh, can I make an oh, announcement? I, oh, yeah. We're, uh, yes, I celebrate you, diversity uh, Fox City's uh, virtual cookout on Saturday. will be on Saturday and it's online on Facebook. Thank you. And uh, just a reminder to our finalists that we want to, right, want to stay on for a, a screenshot. I mean, do you need me to stay or am I, are you ready to go? Um, can you stay, Kitty? Yes, I can. <laughs> if you, you can stay, we'll be a little longer. We can stop recording now. Okay, do, do I lose it then though? No, you just want to make sure you track where it's going. I'm okay. not staying because I'm not part of the screenshot. So don't close the meeting until that's saved. Just as long as you know where it's going. Okay. okay? But I don't. <laughs> You will when you, you will, you will. Okay. It, said, it says after stopping, you'll receive an email notification. Something like that. Yep. Okay. <laughs>